Hello class, my name is Ali Titangalo and my presentation today will focus on the abnormal pacemaker activity of the heart. I hope that by the end of this presentation, I will be able to provide everyone with a better understanding of what an abnormal pacemaker activity is and basically just how the concept works. Before discussing the specific details pertaining to the main idea of this PowerPoint presentation, I believe that it would be best to first talk about some general details of the heart so that we can all have a much better understanding of the concept of pacemaker activity in general rather than just discussing the concept first and having absolutely no idea why it is termed the abnormal pacemaker activity and not the normal pacemaker activity in the first place. So to begin, I am going to assume that we all should know by now that pacemaker activity is conducted by the heart organ. The question that remains is, which specific part of the heart this place this characteristic of pacemaker activity. The heart, one of the most important organs of the human body, contains two different specialized muscle cells. Those muscle cells are one, contractile cells, and two, autorhythmic cells. Contractile cells account for 99% of cardiac muscle cells and are mainly responsible for contractions. So basically, they are in charge of the pumping mechanism. The small 1% that remains of the cardiac muscle cells are known as autorhythmic cells. These cells are the components of the heart that display pacemaker activity and are responsible for generating action potentials. A few details on action potentials within the heart Unlike other muscle cells, cardiomyocytes or heart muscle cells have no resting membrane potential when it comes to generating action potentials. This is because the heart needs to work constantly to ensure that blood is pumped throughout the body. Action potentials in the heart are prolonged so that when one ends, another one is ready to fire and the process keeps going and doesn't stop. Since we are going to talk about pacemaker activity, we're not going to go into details discussing contractile cells. Instead, we are going to focus specifically on autorhythmic cells. Autorhythmic cells are located in four different sites of the heart. Those specific sites are shown in the image provided on this slide. The first site is the sinoatrial node, also known as the SA node. Number two is the atrioventricular node, also known as the AV node. Three, we have the bundle of His, also called the atrioventricular bundle. And lastly, we have the Purkinje fibers. The image displayed on this slide shows the location of each site in the heart. Looking closely, the SA node, that small specialized region, is located near the opening of the superior vena cava in the upper right atrial wall. The AV node is found at the base of the right atrium, just above the junction that divides the ventricles and atria. As for the bundle of His, one can clearly see that that region originates from the AV node and extends downwards to form bundle branches dividing the left and right ventricles. The branches formed by the atrioventricular bundle curve around the ventricular chamber tips and travels along the outer walls. 
As for the Purkinje fibers, they extend from the atrioventricular bundle and spread like twigs on a tree branch throughout the ventricular myocardium. The autorhythmic cells in each of the specialized regions of the heart have different rates of slow drift to threshold. The cells also differ in the rates at which they can cause action potentials. Under normal resting conditions, the autorhythmic cells generate a different number of action potentials based on where they are located. The SA node rate is 70 to 80 action potentials per minute. The AV node rate is 40 to 60 action potentials per minute and the bundle of his, along with the Purkinje fibers, generate approximately 20 to 40 action potentials per minute. The normal pacemaker of the heart is the sinoatrial node. The SA node, being the region with the fastest rate of autorhythmicity of 70 to 80 action potentials per minute, drives the heart particularly the contractile cells, to beat and contract at its pace set. One can ask, so how about the slower rates exhibited by other specialized sites? Well, those sites cannot display their own naturally slow rates because they can only be activated by action potentials that originate in the SA node. Let us use a real-life example to better understand the events of normal pacemaker activity. Say for instance that a train has 100 cars, 97 of which are unable to move on their own, so they must be pulled, and the three remaining are able to move on their own. Of the three cars, we're going to say that the first one can travel at a speed of 70 miles per hour. The second car is a little slower than the first and is able to travel at only 50 miles per hour. For the last car, we're going to say that that one is the slowest and can only travel at 30 miles per hour. Looking at the image provided, if all the cars are joined, the engine that travels the fastest is able to pull the rest of the cars at its speed, which is 70 miles per hour in our case, no matter the speeds the rest of the other cars have. Because the slower engines are being pulled by the fastest engine at a faster speed, they cannot assume their own slower rates as long as they are driven by the fastest engine. Using this example, the car with the fastest speed represents the SA node. The car with the second fastest speed is the AV node, and the last car is the bundle of his and Purkinje fibers. The other percentage of cars that were unable to move on their own represents contract ourselves. Now that we understand how normal pacemaker activity works, we are going to shift our focus to now understanding what an abnormal pacemaker activity looks like. We will be using the same example that we used for normal pacemaker activity, but this time a few things are going to change. In a representation of abnormal pacemaker activity, using the train example with 100 cars, as shown in the image provided, the fastest engine breaks down and the second fastest engine comes in and starts pulling the rest of the cars at its pace, which we said was 50 miles per hour. 
This situation is a close representation of when the SA node is damaged. One of the most common causes of SA node failure or dysfunction is heart disease. Other causes include and are not limited to tears of the heart tissues, scarring from heart surgery, and even from taking certain medications. When the SA node faces damages, the AV node steps in and assumes pacemaker activity at its pace of 40 to 60 action potentials per minute. If for some reason, impulse conduction between the ventricles and atria becomes blocked, the atria then continue at the usual rate of about 70 beats per minute, while the ventricular tissue assumes the autorhythmic rate of 30 beats per minute as initiated by the Purkinje fibers. This situation represents the breakdown of the second car, in our case is the AV node, so that the slow third car, which represents the Purkinje fibers, gets disconnected from the lead car, which is the SA node. In situations where the conducting tissue between the ventricles and atria is damaged, a complete heart block can occur. When the ventricular tissue assumes a rate of 30 beats per minute, it typically means that it can only support sedentary existence where the body can enter a comatose state. There are also certain situations where the Purkinje fiber depolarizes at a much faster rate compared to the SA node. The initiation of a premature action potential or a premature ventricular contraction that spreads before the SA node can generate a normal action potential occurs at an abnormally excitable area called the ectopic focus. A constant discharge by the ectopic focus can shift pacemaker activity from the SA node to the ectopic focus. When that occurs, the heart rate greatly accelerates for a period of time until the ectopic focus returns back to normal. Abnormally irritable areas of ectopic focus are typically linked to heart disease and are mostly caused by anxiety, excess caffeine, sleep deprivation, and alcohol consumption. In cases where the heart is too weak to perform pacemaker activity, doctors can recommend several treatments. Treatments vary depending on the cause of abnormal heart rate. There are certain medications that can be prescribed to help pacemaker activity to return back to normal. If the medications don't work, the best option that most health professionals would then recommend would be using an artificial pacemaker. There are many different types of artificial pacemakers, but they all serve the same function. An artificial pacemaker is an implanted device that can be inserted just under the skin of the chest to assume the role of normal pacemaker activity. This device has two different parts. It has a pulse generator that stores the battery and a microcomputer and it also has leads which are wires that are threaded through myocardial veins and implanted into the heart muscle. The pacemaker works by sending impulses to the heart muscle and sensing the heart's electrical activity. So when the pacemaker senses a drop in heart rate, it can then fire an electrical impulse and tells the heart muscle to, to contract 
thus creating a heartbeat. That concludes my presentation for today. I hope I helped you all gain a better understanding of the abnormal pacemaker activity concept. If there are ever any questions, please feel free to check out the sources listed on this slide. There are also a lot of available resources online to obtain information pertaining to pacemaker activity. Thank you for taking the time to listen through my whole presentation. God bless.